everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Now, a lot of people, when they're at work or busy around the house, find themselves becoming fatigued in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the afternoon. The energy that they had just a few hours before seems to have left them. They are unable to give their best to their work. Well, that's just when Horlick's malted milk tablets come in mighty handy. A few tablets dissolved in the mouth will renew the energy supply quickly, giving you new vitality. If it's hunger that has been making you uncomfortable, Horlick's tablets will give you nourishment, satisfy that empty feeling. There's nothing like those delicious Horlick's malted milk tablets to help ward off fatigue or hunger. It's so easy, too, to carry Horlick's tablets with you. No matter where you are, shopping, motoring, at the office or the factory, or out in the open. Your druggist has Horlick's malted milk tablets in either the natural or the chocolate flavor. They come in a small 10 cent size class, and in other larger sizes as well. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, little did Lum and Abner realize the trouble they would cause when they sent out some pictures of Abner a few days ago to some of the female applicants to their matrimonial bureau. Abner's wife, Elizabeth, still thinks that he has been having an affair with another woman and refuses to listen to his explanation. Yesterday, Lum made an effort to straighten out the misunderstanding for his old friend, but was promptly ushered off the place with a broom. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the office of their matrimonial bureau. Lum is trying to answer some of their many letters, while Abner still seems to be brooding over his domestic troubles. Listen. I see. Here's an order for a red-headed husband, six foot tall, about 40 year old. Hmm. Well, I believe we've got one just about fit that description. Lum, I uh, reckon you could stand out there at the fence and sort of holler. Huh? I, I say, reckon you could stand out there at the fence and sort of holler at Elizabeth and explain things to her. Abner, I wish you'd hash up about that. I'm trying to answer some of these letters. This matrimonial bureau mail has been stacking up here for days. I don't care. Here's a letter from Roseville, Ohio. Feller says he's a young man, 66 year old, looking for a life companion and help me. Oh, man. We don't say here what kind he wants. Ain't particular. <laughs> that makes it easier. Mom, Dad, blame it all. I wish you'd put them letters down and listen to me. What is it you want, Abner? If you're still trying to argue me into going back over to your place and talking to Elizabeth, you can just forget it. That woman is unsafe to be around. Well, what all did you say to her yesterday? Nothing. She never gave me a chance. Followed me clean out there in the road, chunking rocks at me. Yeah, I know. We was looking out the window over here and seen her do that. And the best thing for you to do is to stay over at my house till she sort of cools off some more. Well, I don't want to wear out my welcome over at your place, Mom. Then she'll wear out something worse than that for you if you go home. Uh, you never did tell her that there weren't nothing to that story about me going into the county seat the other night, huh? No, I told you. I never got a chance to tell her nothing. She done all the talking. Yeah, she's definitely all that does us. It's hard to explain things to folks when they do all the talking that way. They, they just can't listen good for some reason or another. But now, Law, you said yes to it. You'd guarantee you to get her back in a good humor with me, and it's up to you to do it some way or other. Well, Abner, we may as well give up the idea of ever trying to explain it to her, for she won't give you a chance to talk. We've got to find some other way. Now, what other ways are they? Why... It ought to be lots of ways. It ought to be. If we could get her sympathy roused some way or other, get her to feel sorrowful for you. Yeah. If you could get serious sick or something like that. You don't feel bad, do you? No, no, I feel all right. Why? Nothing. I, I, it won't work. Give me a little time. I'll study up some way to get you out of it. Yeah, I hope you do, Rob. It, it just don't seem right not to have my home to go to no more. Elizabeth is a good woman at heart. She wouldn't harm a flea. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if I was a flea, I wouldn't put too much confidence in her the way she's feeling now. Just to think. After all these years, never appreciated what a fine little woman I had. Never knowed what a good housekeeper she was till I started staying over at your place. Well, don't sit there and blubber about it. That ain't going to help none. Oh, Just man. let me get caught up with her matrimonial mail here, and I'll sit down with you, and we'll study up some way to get you out of it. Well, now, Lum is bound to be a way to make Elizabeth listen to it. The only trouble, if we get you out of this scrape, she's going to be mad all over again when she finds out that Squire Skimp beat us out of the store here. Oh, yeah, she's going high in a kite when she hears that. Pearl called out here yesterday for some groceries, so... I know that she don't know nothing about it yet. No. 
Well, it's the best was to come in here and find these shells all empty. she would just about pull this place down on top of them. Yeah, well, they ain't plumb empty. I know the squire left a little stuff scattered around. Oh, no, they are. Stuff they couldn't sell, I reckon. Yeah, well, There's two or three bottles of pepper sauce up there, I know Whole bowls of cheesecloth back in behind the counter there. Yeah, there's a little stuff. Never left anything in the counter. Wait a minute. Huh? Here comes Cedric Weehan. Wait a minute. First time I saw him, quite a spell. Oh, and he's been bucking slabs down at the sawmill, I think. Yeah, I bet he found out by now that what an easy job he had when he's working down here for... <laughs> well, come in, Cedric. Yeah, come in here, Cedric. You're sort of a stranger around here. <laughs> yes, Bob. I've been working pretty steady. Ain't had no time off to loaf, hardly. <laughs> hey, you ain't been fired, have you, Cedric? No, they just laid us off for a few days. Skidway's empty down there at the mill, and the weather's been so bad they couldn't get no logs in, so they just shut down till they get catched up. Uh-huh. Well, it's off the chair. Sit down there, Cedric. Excuse me while I go ahead here. I've got to answer this mail. Uh, anything uh, particular you want, Cedric? Well, I just sort of wanted to talk to you fellas, sort of. Well? I hear you run the matrimonial bureau over here and sort of solving domestic problems for folks. Well, we are, Cedric, but <laughs> low me. Undoubtedly, you ain't got no domestic problems. You ain't married. No, but me and uh, Gertrude Seastrunk fell out with one another, and I just thought maybe you fellas could give me some advice. Well, I don't know, Cedric. We'll help if we can, I'll tell you that. Well, well what would you do, Mr. Abner, if you and Mrs. Peabody was having trouble? I don't know. It's just what I've been sitting here thinking about for a week, Cedric. Uh, are you and Mrs. Peabody having family troubles with one another? Well, I uh, don't make no mention of it, Cedric, uh, but we ain't getting along as well as we could. Uh, you ain't even on separating her, are you? Giving her a quitting? Oh, her. no, no, nothing as bad as that. It's just a misunderstanding. She just won't give me a chance to explain to her. Won't let me come on the place. You mean she won't even let you come home? No, no, she's acting awful mean about it. <laughs> I bet if you was to have an automobile accident and got yourself all crippled up, she'd have her regrets over treating you this way. Yeah. <laughs> Be ashamed the way she treated you. Yeah, she might, Cedric. I don't know. What did you say, Cedric? Say that again. Well, I, I never meant no harm by it, Mr. Lum. I, I, I just said if Mr. Abner here was to have an automobile wreck and get himself hurt, uh, Miss Peabody would feel sorry for about the way she done him, I bet you. Hey, right, Granny, that's an idea. That's an idea. That's just what I've been looking for. Abner, you're going to have an automobile wreck. Huh? You're going to have an automobile wreck. Oh, my goodness. How can you tell that? And you're going to have an arm broke. Are you telling my fortune? No. Well, that's what's going to happen to you anyway. You're going to have a bad accident this afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Right on top of all my other trouble, something like this has got to happen. Where is it going to take place, Mom? Right here, now. Well, I can't have no automobile wreck sitting here in a store. Well, you are going to anyway. You've got to. It's the only way to get Elizabeth in a good humor with you, Abner. Well, oh, me, I'd, I'd love to make up with her, Lom, but I, I don't want to break an arm to do it. All right, Granny, it might be best to break both arms. Oh, my goodness, Lom, oh, me. See, here's my idea, Abner. We're just going to make out like you've had an accident. We'll take and wrap your arms up with some bandages and all that stuff and carry you over to the house and <laughs> tell Elizabeth you're run over by a car. Oh, uh, just make out like my, I, I got my arms broke, huh? That's right. <laughs> and then you can explain everything to her. You know she ain't going to hit you with both your arms broke. No, I don't believe she will. Yeah, we'll have you looking like a freight train hit you. <laughs> <laughs> if this won't teach Elizabeth a lesson, <laughs> it'll set your sympathy like nothing else will. Yeah, but it will too. If it won't, it won't nothing to it. No. Uh, Cedric, look over there behind the counter and bring me that bowl of cheese ball. Abner, get some of them box lids we split up for kindling wood. They'll make good splints for your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it, Cedric. Bring it here. I know you. This might work all right, Mom. You know what? Right, of course it'll work. <laughs> Roll up your sleeve there. Better get up here on the counter and lay down. Yeah, yeah, come on. Granny, wait a minute. I've got a bottle of cure comb here in my desk drawer. <laughs> we can pour that over them bandages so it'll look like he's bad hurt. Hey, dog, I <laughs> did have an accident, didn't I? <laughs> oh, that car just kept running over. <laughs> don't you never say nothing about this, Cedric. You neither, Abner. We don't want nobody but us three to know anything about it. Oh, no, sir. If you ever tell this, Cedric, I'll lock you up in jail and throw the key away. Well, I ain't going to say nothing about it. That's the way. Uh, Cedric, you start dropping up Abner's arm there while I telephone up Lizbeth and break the sad news to her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, wait a minute here, Cedric. Uh, put them boards all around my arm here first, you know, and then lock the cheesecloth around them there. Oh, I see. I'll fix them. Both arms, huh? Yeah, both of them, yeah. Here, Abner. Huh? Yeah, you get over here close to the telephone and, uh... Tell Elizabeth that you've been calling for her. <laughs> then while I'm talking to her, you can holler her name out two or three times. <laughs> what for? Wait a minute. Uh, hello? Elizabeth? 
This here is no matter. That's the way it is. Rob them good. Well, now, wait a minute, Elizabeth. Before you start in on that, I, I've got some uh, awful sad news for you. Awful sad. Drop it. Yes, Mom. Well, it's about Abner. Why, he's been run over by an automobile. Yeah, two or three of them. Well, we don't know how bad he's hurt. No. So far, we found two broke arms, and he's hurt internal. It's the worst in him. <laughs> Tell her I ain't come to myself yet, Mom. He said, uh, oh, shut up, Abner. Uh, he ain't come to himself yet, Elizabeth, but he keeps calling your name. Calling for you. Call her. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Not the stout. Elizabeth! Now, lock up my other arm, Shadrach. Well, now, I wouldn't take it too hard, Elizabeth. He might pull through the shatters. Huh? No, don't come over here. We're just fixing to bring him over there. Get to bed ready and we'll be right. Well, it's a great idea. If it works. <laughs> and now, let's listen just a minute to Jane Taylor and her friend Ruth Nichols. Here they are. Ruth, I've just discovered the best reducing plan. I know, you told me all about it. Well, I couldn't have. I just found out about it week before last. I haven't seen you for a month. Well, you were telling me all about that day that we had lunch with, with Helen Powers. Oh, you mean that one. Oh, that was a farce. A farce? Yes, I wore myself out in two days with all that crazy exercise. <laughs> just as I told you you would. Why don't you be sensible, Jane? I much prefer carrying a few extra pounds to killing myself trying to act like a chimpanzee. <laughs> oh, you don't have to act like a chimpanzee. Not with this new reducing plan. You don't have to exercise at all, in fact. Jane, you haven't taken anything that might might hurt you, have you? I'd see my doctor before I tried any of those things. Don't be silly. No, I'm not being silly, but some of those things are harmful. Well, let me tell you what I've done. Today and every day last week, I drank a glass of Horlick's malted milk at noon. Will that kill me, do you think? Horlicks? Well, of course it won't, but I don't see how... I'll drink a glass of Horlicks instead of eating a heavy luncheon. Horlicks is nourishing and sustaining, but it doesn't have an excess of calories like a heavy meal. That's how Horlicks at noon helps reduce re- reduce you. It's really effective, Ruth. I lost two pounds last week, the very first week I tried it. Well, say, that's the most sensible reducing plan I've ever heard of. That glass of Horlicks for lunch sounds awfully good to me. I guess I'll try the Horlicks reducing plan, too. Oh, good. My figure could stand a little uh, trimming. (laughs) And a glass of Horlicks instead of a heavy meal at noon is a mighty fine reducing plan. One that will help you overweight people regain a youthful waistline. Now you can make a glass of Horlicks quickly and easily, either at home or at work. Horlicks, you know, is a delicious, full-flavored drink when mixed with water alone. It isn't necessary to add any flavoring or even milk. You can get Horlick's malted milk in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.